numbers. So the question, in fact, says this. You have a matrix like this. You have to solve the system like this. So if you build the augmented matrix, you have to consider the matrix like this, right? So your left-hand side given by a schematic way to write it. Your augmented, augmented matrix like this, your left-hand side is A, your right-hand side this time is a zero vector. You can sub it in, of course, you can, I can sub in the whole matrix in here to write the actual matrix on which I will start doing my row echelon form reduction or Gaussian elimination reduction. Here's the matrix. I just sub in my A for the left-hand side and zero for the right-hand side. In principle, this question is no different to the one we just did with you. It's just the complex numbers apparently trips many of you because you just they, they seem different to you. They no different to the real numbers. You just do the same things you do with the real numbers. It, it might involve a little bit more arithmetic, but given that you have calculators with you all the time, it shouldn't be a big deal. Although you can do more, most, all of them without any calculator. If you want to see the system, the actual system, which is associated with it, oh, actually it's my fault. Do you see what's wrong with this? Yeah, it's not, it's, it's not the one which is here. The one which is here, here. That's the one. Yeah, I just missed, I just took it. I, I took you one step, like a, I skipped one step, in fact. That's the one, but that's, that's the A matrix. This is not the A matrix. This is already, in fact, this is already row echelon form, isn't it? Because you can see the pivots clearly here. That's one pivot, that's the other pivot. And the step which took this matrix down to this one, here's the step. You take the first, you, that's the step, Jim. So we're looking at the system, that's the one, that's the associated augmented matrix. If I start moving my system towards the row echelon form, that's the kind of row, elementary row operation I have to do. If I do that operation, I'm not gonna take you through the details of the arithmetic, I hope you can finish it without my help. That's the matrix, that's the kind of matrix you will have. Uh, this is already, this is already the row echelon form. Already in this matrix we can do back substitution. However, I, I, I took this system a little bit further because I don't like this 2i in the pivotal position. I don't like this i in the pivotal position. So I, I did two extra steps. One of them I cancel i in the first row and the second one I cancel 2i in the second row. So I'm sort of making the steps towards a reduced row echelon form. If I do that, again, I'll, I'll skip arithmetic. The result, it's relatively simple arithmetic, in fact. That, that's what, what that will be if I cancel this out. This is already even, even better for the back substitution, right? Because now my pivots are very nice numbers, one and one, no longer complex numbers in pivots. We can still make another step towards the row, to the, towards the reduced row echelon form by using this pivot, by using this pivot and vanishing this number above the pivot. The elementary row operation which is required for that, it should be here somewhere, right here. That's the elementary row operation which is required for, for that, to cancel this number and still keeping this in the row echelon form. The result of that will be this. This, in fact, is the reduced row echelon form. It's also it's row echelon form and it is reduced one because pivots are unities and zeros above the pivots. Not only below the pivots, but also above the pivots. Uh, so if I do back substitution in this reduced row echelon form, so I, if I use like, well, we're not given any variables here. So this vector x, I never expanded what the x is, what the component of the x is. Let's just see what kind of components I use here. I use x1, x2, x3. So if I do my back substitution, uh, x1 take 3i, x3 equals zero. And the back substitution for, I mean, the, the system, the second equation, which corresponds to the second row is this one. Remember, the last column here, the last column here is non-leading column. It must be parametrized. It's, it is a non-leading column. So this actually, this one should go on the right-hand side. This should go on the right-hand side. So if I do it, so if I call x3 a parameter lambda, and if I solve for x1, x2 now in terms of x3, the result will be like this. Easy solution. Or you can put the solution in vector form, like one of you suggests, because it is a line effectively. You can put the solution in vector form, and that will be your answer for that. This question is no different to the one we did before. The only difference is that we have to operate with the complex numbers. It involves a little bit more arithmetic, but in principle, everything goes the same. 